I mean exactly what I say. Men should pay for everything. Everything. Because generous men win. And women should be hypergamous. It's a good thing. Damn right. Fit, Zula Gullah. 50 50 is good. But see, a dude by the name of Zula Gullah will never be the CEO of Apple. Those names, those, no offense, Zula, but you don't see Zula Gullah uh, in Fortune, Forbes, The Economist. You don't see these kind of names. And you certainly don't, when you get up around men who run these kind of things, they don't think in terms of 50-50. So let's start with our first point there. Uh. And I'm going to be doing it. It's going to be a little bit more. Um, it's going to be a little bit more nonchalant, but I'm going to be still giving my very good opinion. So let's start right here. So if you're a man who wants to be part of a Fortune 500, if you're a man who wants to be CEO, big dog, well, guess what? Let me take my glasses off when I say this. Shout out to Wayne. Okay, so here's the thing. Listen, I'm obviously not against 50-50. I'm not against um, men who want to split, split, split the bills 50-50. I have no problem with that. Here's my thing. And we're going to watch a video on this at some point, and I really want to break this down. But what I think the problem is, is that I don't understand. I, for me personally, I don't I understand why I got want to go 50-50 because at some point in your life, you don't have it all. Okay, you don't. It just is what it is. You know, obviously I've gone 50-50. We got to pay the bills. Both of us got to work. I'm not at a place in my life where I'm like this top dollar guy. You know, I already know specifically how much I need to make to where my family can do that. Tell you what, though, if I had a kid right now, things would completely change. But well, I guess it is what it is. We just going to have to struggle, you know, because daycare would just take us out, you know, and uh, I think it'd be wiser for me to just wait, work more and make sure my family's provided for. That's why I should be doing the best I can here trying to make this channel work because so I can push myself and do more ventures and gain more skills in other areas and be able to take care of my family where I don't have to worry about that. However, let me say this as well. You, mm, I know this is going to hurt. I know this is going to hurt. Y'all going to be pissed off at me. Listen, motherfucker, I'm just a regular dude. I'm not, how are you? No, no, I'm not a Henry. I'm not a hit squad. I'm none of those things. I'm just a regular black fat dude. Okay. That's all I am. Okay. But I do think that if you feel like you will always be a 50, 50 person, then you have no ambition. It just is what it is. If you're a person who doesn't think that they're going to have to pay for everything or want to let the women around them be hypergamous. I know y'all want to say gold diggers, uh, even though there's not much gold to dig for. I think that you should honestly, Start to just push yourself to where I, this is my my point of paying for everything. It's not, it doesn't have to be a simple mindset of I got to make all the money and she just can sit on her ass. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that you should do it to where if something was to happen, you're good. You're good. And your family's taken care of. So work as hard as you fucking can in case something happens to you or something happens to your wife or something happens in your life where only one of y'all can work. Or one of y'all can even is even here anymore. It does happen. So why not work as hard as possible to make sure your family has as much money as possible? I think, me personally, that for when you have a marriage, the best version of that marriage is the man working and the wife taking the wife taking care of the family and the home. I think you're gonna get the best out of the woman and the best out of the man in those outcomes. Men who go out there saying, Oh my god, I don't want a wife who doesn't do anything or anything. I get it. If y'all are both in y'all's 40s or 50s, okay, I get it. There ain't no family to take care of. There's really no point of her staying home at that point. If she wants to work, fine. I mean, I, there's no problem with that. But for the men who are just doing the whole, they want to be 50-50 because they want, don't want their wife to, uh, because they're just wanting their woman to simply not be a gold digger and all that bullshit, then, man, listen, this, ain't, this life ain't for you, and that's fine. But don't get out here complaining for the men who do 
work all those hours or do continue to put into their craft. And then when they finally start to make it and they can take care of the whole family by themselves, don't get mad at those dudes. Don't start saying, well, I think that's stupid. Don't start getting mad at the women because you can't do it. Let's just call it what it is, baby. You can't do it. At the end of the day, you can't pay for everything. It's cool. It's okay, man. You can't always be there. But it's a lazy mindset to think that you can't never do it. It's a lazy mindset to put a ceiling on your family to be like, nope, I want to work at McDonald's and be the fry cook for the rest of my life. That's crazy. Then you need to sit your ass at home and fuck getting a family and a wife. If you want to, I'm not saying, once again, I'm not saying that you have to start there because everybody has starts at a different place. Some of us fuck up like myself. I fucked up. You, you build a whole career and you realize you don't want to do it. And now you're fucked. And money goes down. And now you got to work your ass off to do it. I'm not saying you have to do it, like I said, in your 20s or even in your 30s. But somewhere I think in those 40s, you should be there. In your 40s, you should be like, oh, yeah, I got I pay for everything. My wife don't work no more. I think at that point, you should at least expire to be that. By 30, you got to figure it out. At 30 years old, guys, I already figured out I'm a fucking failure. Fail. Okay. Now my whole goal is make sure by 40, I can go ahead and provide for my family. I can't do it right now. I can, oh, I can provide for my family, but I can't can't pay for every damn thing and just live a good life. No. If I pay for everything, we're going to be living a life, but it ain't going to be luxury. It's just going to be life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oodles of noodles. Okay. We're going to be doing that all day. Luckily, I got the gift of gaff so I can network with people. And so I live a bunch, about around a bunch of hunters. So I get, uh, what do you call it? Uh, game. Game. I get all types of elk, all types of cow, even though you don't hunt cows, obviously. I'm talking, you know what I mean? I get all types of elk, whatever the hell that other deer is. I don't hunt. And I get a whole lot of uh, ham from farms, from pigs. So I get meat for free. And I know that sounded very cringe and very weird the way I said that. Doesn't matter. But I get tons and tons of groceries just like that. Obviously, I buy all the other stuff, but I'm just saying, networking with the men in my community makes it so much easier for me to afford things easy. But I don't live a mindset that if that was, if I couldn't do that, motherfucker, I'd find a way. I'd find a way. So for you guys who are like, ah, we got to be 50-50 because this and that, and I just don't want a woman to do this. Well, I just, you're, you're screwed, dude. Because I don't care what you say. I don't care what women say. The truth is, at the end of the day, if a woman had the choice. Oh, this is about the. Ooh. I know, man. I know, man. I know. Come on now, dog. I know. Come on, man. I know if I say this. If a woman had a choice, most women would say, if a woman had a choice. If women, if you could sit them down and say, would you work or do you not want to work? Most women say they don't want to work or they would want to work, but they don't want their money to go to anything important. They might want to just go to work for the the vanity of it. Or maybe they don't want to be bored at home once the kids are out of the house. But if a woman said I could work, but the, my money doesn't mean anything, means that if any, at any point I could quit and walk away, every woman's choosing that, or at least the vast majority of them, except for the women who are career driven. And that's very, very, very few women who want to work 80 hours a week. Now, there are some men who don't want to work. Those are weird men to me. Because, listen, if you're a man who says, I don't want to work, and I don't mean going to a nine to five that you hate. I don't mean that. But if you're not a man who says, I'm going to try to put every bit of myself into some kind of craft or something, it might, like I said, it might not be the job you have right now. It's okay to hate your job. I get that. But if you can't be like, okay, I hate this job. But I'm going to put tons of money into, I mean, tons of my time into learning how to weld. Tons of my time into learning how to tattoo. Fuck it. Learning how to run run my own business. If you can't be that kind of dude, then dude. Life's about to get rough for you. Because one of the hardest things that y'all don't get is when, I, when you have these kind of subjects is, oh, yeah, I know men should pay for everything. I get that. But guys, you could live until you're 90. I, I know most of us men die way before then. But imagine yourself if you made it to 80, let's just give you 85 years old. And you didn't, you from your 30s to 85, you just gave up somewhere in there and said, oh, I'm too old at 30 and just fucked the next 50 years. And now not only are you 85 and broke, your, your wife is 85 and broke or 80 or whatever. 
and your kids have to make the money. Now, your kids got to wipe your ass. Your kids got to do everything for you because you're broke. What, you, trust me, guys. You do not want to die. And it's a, it's a, when your body starts to break down, it is horrible. You don't want to be that and also leave your family with tons of debt. And you're broke as fuck because the last 20 years of your life, you couldn't even work or your back broke or something happened to you for those last 20 years. Your body broke down so bad you couldn't work no more. And now you got nothing. It's going to be a hard ass way out. And some people think, well, I had my family life. And no, bruh. Even the people who have families, they might not have been a millionaire, but they worked their ass off that whole time to get at least a little bit of change and lived as frugal as they could. Anyway. Let's get into this thing. I'm going to piss some people off. You know what, what it pisses people off? I'm going to tell you why it pisses people off. Because the truth hurts. The truth hurts. Let's get started. Let's get started. Ladies, get you a glass of wine. Get you a glass of wine. Sit back and something. Because gentlemen... It's time. It is time. It is time. Are we ready? Are we ready? Good. Black men, it's time to grow up. Time to grow up. Time to grow up. Before you get triggered, I need you to ask yourself some questions. Go down to the comment section. Go down to the description of the video. It's not your fault how the world is, but it is your responsibility for you. Gentlemen, where do you rank amongst men? We're not going to we're not going to talk about men in comparison to women in this stream. Any man, any male that comes in talking about what a man should do because of what a woman does, I want you guys to call him male. Any man that comes in and says, okay, hot lips, CIA men, hit squad, Blake, blue, any male that comes in our, in our sacred space of high achievers, earners, power brokers, and movers and shakers coming in talking about well, why should I have to do 50-50 if a woman does? Any, any talk like that, I just want you to type male. Every time you see it in big letters, male. Where do you rank amongst men? All men, not black men, not Ados black men. I mean all men. Where do you rank? Not not your cousin, not your uncle, not your grandpa and him. Where do you rank? Where did you rank when you graduated from high school? Were you the valedictorian, the salutatorian? Were you in the top 5%, top 10%? See, Nate Taylor, let me tell you something. Men who rank well know where they rank. They know their numbers. Men who rank well are quick to tell you where they rank. A dude with an 800, a dude with an 800 credit score knows his credit score is 800. Part. Where do you rank amongst other men? Well, I'll tell you where I rank. Motherfucker, I rank high as a fucking blade of grass. I'm at the bottom, motherfucker. The bottom! Okay? That's okay. I know what I make, and if you compare... Listen, I'm, I'm transparent on here. I used to make above average for what my age is. Now I don't because I gave up my entire career to be to start all over again. Like a dumbass. Maybe, maybe not. Couldn't do my job no more. I lost all my compassion. And let me say this before I continue on. See, I'm thinking my little nuggets here and there. Sometimes when you work a job as long as I did and I did the same kind of job for 20 years, I'm going to tell you, look. My compassion fatigue for people at least in a um, setting where I have to take care of them with my hands. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Guiding them, teaching them, feeding them. You know what I'm talking about. That whole population of people, God bless the people who can still do it. 
But after 20 years, I'm broken. I stood, I stayed too long and I lost all my compassion. And I know that sucks. That doesn't mean I don't care for those kind of people. But the part of me that was that had to heart for it, it goes away. And maybe you've experienced this in a certain job. Maybe if you've been a nurse or maybe you were somebody who've worked in other medical uh capacity or maybe you you know you're just the person who work with people in and in maybe tutoring or something like that or a school teacher you lose the passion for the kids you lose you just lose it all and you're just like i'm ready to go if you stay in it too long you learn to hate the kids you know what i mean not really hate them but you you learn to care less you know sorry this apple just got to me so that's where i got to so I had to start over. And it's it's it caused my ranking to go down. I'm not where I want to be. I'm above, I'm way below average as far as it being in shape. I don't know, I let myself go. I failed completely. Had something happen in my life outside of this, you know, changing careers. And I fucked it all up. There's no excuses here. So I know where I rank. That's the beautiful thing about life. And that's why I still want to keep pushing this thing where men should pay for everything because it'll it'll make you the best version of yourself. Every day I sit down and think with myself like, man, I can't wait till I can take care of my family completely. And they, they, can, they, they can rely on me. And I'm not, I'm not, and some people will get this confused with controlling your spouse or controlling the family. It's like, no, I want my family to be good. I want them to focus on what they want to focus on. I will always put money aside for my family. So if I die, they won't be left with nothing. Even if it didn't work out, let's say me and my spouse divorce and life life goes on. I'm not that kind of dude who's going to be like, well, that bit, <laughs> that girl don't get nothing. I'm not going to do all that. Give my, give my part for the, the contributions and keep it moving. But the thing is, I think, like you guys should strive to pay for everything and let the women be hypergamous. And if you're not married or you're not dating or you're, or you're getting to that point in your life, you feel like you're there, go for those women. Go for that woman. Not not a woman who will nag you to death. I'm not talking about that. Or a woman who's on your ass because she feels like you should be the CEO and you're the executive. I'm talking about, talking about an ungrateful woman. I'm talking about go for a woman who will support you like a motherfucker, but she is going to be feminine. You need to go get yourself as feminine as a woman as possible. You want them to be hypergamous. So they will always push you, not necessarily like that to make you better, but they're so fucking feminine that you just, you, it brings out the most masculine part of you. Like, I want to take care of this woman because of how good she takes care of the house or how good she supports me or how good she she does other stuff on the back end that I, you can't take care of because you're busy. She's doing such a great job taking care of the children. You want to get a woman like that because that's a woman you can come home to every night. And you're like, damn it, I just want to provide for a woman like that. Not only are you ambitious already because you want to, you're not trying to just own one McDonald's. You're trying to own every McDonald's in the state. You're trying to be top dog if you can get there. There's nothing wrong with being that ambitious and pushing as hard as you can. Doesn't matter if you get there or not, as long as you're pushing. And if it don't work out there, go try to earn all the Burger Kings. I'm just giving random places, guys. But still, get somebody that's going to make you want to do that shit. Because you don't want to get with somebody who's always competing with you. For you guys who say, oh, I want to marry another lawyer. <laughs> if you're a lawyer, you want to marry another lawyer. It's like, damn. Are y'all ever going to spend any time together? Because both of y'all putting in 80 hours a week, you might say hello, goodbye. And some people are like that. I get that there's some people in that small percentage who don't need social interaction like that. They can say hello, goodbye. You know, y'all have, you know, your little sexy time here and there. And that's it. You get on about your day. But most people are going to have to be able to socialize. They want to come home to a, maybe a nice warm meal. Or they might just want to come home to just somebody to talk to. It's besides their coworkers. They get... You know, somebody that they can decompress with. Somebody they they can really sit down and be like, damn, babe, today was a hard day. I mean, damn, it's been a long week. It's been a bad year. Man, we really got to push stuff. You want somebody like that. And that's somebody you want to provide for. That's what I'm saying when I say you should get a woman who's not pergamous. Don't get caught up in the whole, oh, she's a gold digger. And I, I, I don't want a woman who just wants me for my money. Man, shut up with the stupid shit. Only people who ever say I don't want a woman who wants me only for my money are people who are broke. I'm sorry. This is the only people I ever hear say that. I've, I've met millionaires, talked to millionaires. I have a millionaire in my family. But I ain't never heard them say, huh, I don't want a woman who's just going to take my money. They don't talk that way. They're not dumb. They didn't get there being stupid. They didn't make their money being dumb. So it's just like, stop with that shit. If you don't want it, you don't want it. This video is not for you. 
But I'll talk about for the men who are like, yeah, you know what? I want to push towards something better. Get you a woman who is hypergamous. Let's continue. A dude with an 800 credit score knows his credit score is 800. <laughs> Am I lying? A dude with a high credit score knows his credit score. A dude with a low credit score don't know. Where do you rank up gunks men? All men. Because here's the reality of it. Black men, you're not special. We're not special. At the end of the day, there is a ranking. Everyone has to deal with prejudice. Everyone has to deal with some sort of ism. The goal of any man is to make yourself powerful enough to where it does not affect you. Like it or not, for the guys who are, for the 36 guys who this triggered, you have no power. That's the, that's the extent of your power, hitting a dislike button. What do you rank amongst men? Well, see, if you're already in the average or below average amongst all men, and I mean your economic ranking, your academic ranking, your resume, hashtag show you work. Why don't I say show your work? Because that, that, that cuts through all the fluff. How old are you? You're 40 years old and your resume is paper thin. You rank low. I said this on the breakdown, a woman's perspective. This is the reason so many black men run around talking about game and, 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 and sex. When they pass 35, because that's all you got. You have nothing else that manhood worldwide counts. That's all you got. And that's your problem. Are you bold? Obviously, you're not. Average or below average men are not bold. And the only problem is this. Understand something. I'm directing this broadcast to guys who want to be in the top 10% of men. If you want to be average, cool, no heat, no judgment, but I'm an image consultant, personal and corporate image consultant, life coach. I have average people have no use for what I do, nor do they have use for a stockbroker, uh, an attorney or retainer, a PR firm, corporate accountants. No heat, no judgment. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, be a business owner, which really a lot of you guys want free money. You don't want to work, but we're going to get into that. See, the entrepreneur is the buzzword of the day. And you really, a lot of guys are entrepreneurs. You want free money. Are you bold? Answer that question for yourself. How many, how many men, in, how many men in here can say they are bold men? Bold men, if you are a bold man, type bold in big letters. If you are truly a bold man, but I'm going to test it. Are you ambitious? Come on, man. Why you got to test it? I just want to raise my fucking hand. I don't want to actually prove no shit. I don't really know. Am I bold? Hmm. I don't know. Ambitious to a fault. See, the beautiful thing about being ambitious Damn, I got so much shit to say, guys. I'm so fucking excited to make this video. I've been waiting months to make this. I got so much to say. Ambition. Bold. Wanna be entrepreneurs. Listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to be an entrepreneur. I don't think there's anything wrong to wanna be ambitious. But here's the problem. Motherfucker, it may be a decade before you see a fucking thing a decade a decade okay i knew a guy who was a youtuber i don't know him personally let me stop saying that when i say i know a guy i mean when sometimes guys when i say i know a guy i just mean i i, I was listening to them i need to just start saying that my apologies I was listening to this guy who's been doing YouTube for 14 years. 15, though. Couldn't crack 100,000 subscribers. Couldn't crack 100,000 at all. Didn't crack it until his 14th year on YouTube. Trying every fucking thing. We're going to stick with YouTube because it's something y'all can relate to. 
there's people who have been trying to be doctors. Somebody who's been trying to push forward in their shoe business. I see so many people who do jewelry and all that kind of stuff, selling grills. People who are want to be dentists, but they also want to do other stuff. People who want to be in the legal business, not necessarily a lawyer. The hard thing, guys, is to keep doing it day in and day out. I'm a, Excuse my language, but it's going to make a bitch out of you. Absolutely. It made a bitch out of me. When I really started pushing into the, the streaming life and doing this, at first it was fun. Yay! I was having a good time laughing with my friends. <laughs> we were all good. And then all of a sudden you start getting caught up in the numbers. All of a sudden, you get the trolls. All of a sudden, you start to feel like a failure. And instead of me being able to push through that shit, I disappeared. I ran like a fool. I just said, fuck it. There was a point in my life I was putting out three videos a day. 15 videos a week. I saw the numbers climb. I have a video that's still doing pretty well today for my, for my standards. And it's just like, damn. What would have happened if I had just kept going? And that's something I want to talk to you guys about, man. As you, we continue to go down this uh, whole damn video, I want to let you guys know that you're going to fuck up and run sometimes. You run from it. You know, I dropped 120 pounds and gained it all back. And I ran because I was scared. I'm showing my face again. See, the beautiful thing is when you want to chase your dreams, it's hard to focus on the little things anymore. It's hard to focus on the details. You're putting in 60, 80 hours a week, and you still got to go to work. And you're starting to, you, you, you start saying, well, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. Well, you know, I ain't got time to cook and eat healthy. I, I'm just going to grab the, the, first, the first thing I can fucking see at the store. Or I'm just going to just cook easy, nasty meals. And it all falls apart. It's the hard thing about being an entrepreneur and being somebody who wants to chase your dreams and being ambitious is you can't just skip the small details. It's, it'll be the small details. I forgot how that saying goes, but it's the small details that sink the ship. It's the small holes that will sink the ship. One screw breaks. If y'all remember like the Titanic, one screw starts breaking, another screw breaks. It just takes one person to cut corners and bam, the whole ship and a lot of people die. That's a little extreme, but you know what I mean? Your whole life can be sunk just because you fucked up on the small things. So being ambitious and being somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur, it's not easy. You got to pay attention to everything. Because there, yeah, there are people out here who scam and all that stuff, and those people go to jail. Those people lose everything. But if you want to be in this shit forever, and, you, and it's really mad, and I want to tell you, there's a difference, guys, between just making money and building a legacy. And I'm not talking about making yourself a god or something. But it's about building a legacy that your family can follow. And that's what I, that's the things I think about. I don't want to build a legacy for me. I don't really care if they remember Trey. But what did I do for the kingdom ultimately? What did I do to bring people to the best version of themselves? Okay. What did I do to help other people get closer to what I believe as God? What, what, what did I do? What did I do to show people that God in me? Show people the light. Show people the, the getting out of the failures. That's, that matters to me. That's a legacy. I don't necessarily want it, them to remember me, but I want it to be carried on because I care about people at the end of the day. So, but it's the small details that I fucked up on. I got so caught up in trying to build money and trying to build numbers. And that's the hard thing about being ambitious and being want to want to be an entrepreneur. It's not easy. It's going to take every bit of you. And you got to focus on the details when you're off camera. You need to focus on whatever you need to do, whether that be, you know, gym, meditation, focus on your mental health, focus on the people around you, still be able to be social. You still need to get out and talk to people so you don't start becoming unrelatable because you become some kind of weirdo because you don't talk to people anymore. So you don't know how to really communicate except through a camera by yourself. So being ambitious and being bold is being being bold is such a big thing because you have to not only continue to show your face, but if somebody was to meet you in public, they don't you shouldn't be a whole different person if somebody ever met you. But like, uh, this motherfucker ain't in shape. This motherfucker ain't caring about the people. He ain't generous. He's an asshole when I met him. You don't want that. You want to be who you are on camera as you are off the camera. So I think it's more important to focus on the shit 
off the camera. So when you get on this camera, this shit runs smooth for you. Last thing I'll shut up. When people run TV shows, that hour and a half that you see of a TV show, somebody who runs a live TV show, and that hour and a half or two hours or whatever that show is, or like the news or a sports show or something like that, a podcast maybe that's live every day, there may be six, seven hours of planning before the fucking, before they press record, they've already had a board meeting, they've already gone over video ideas, they've already worked on the cameras, worked on sound, did all this other bullshit before they even hopped on the camera. You saw the ending results. You didn't see all the work that got put into it before that. So yes, everything you do off camera, guys, or you people who don't live stream or don't make videos at all, everything you do when you're not at work affects your work. And that's why you eventually need to find a job that you can at least passionately do. Not every day. Passion doesn't mean every day. You need to find a job that you can do at least the vast majority of the time, give 110%, which is, you know, technically not a, technically not a thing you can do. But get, get, get as close as you can to where you can give damn near full effort. But your outside life matters. You know what I mean?